In previous videos, we've seen that if you take an NPN transistor and make the connections in such a way that the emitter base is forward biased and the collector base is reverse biased, then the transistor acts like an amplifier. But so far, we had kept these voltages a constant. We didn't change them much because we wanted to focus more on the working of a transistor without complicating things. But to get a full understanding of how does a transistor behave in various circumstances, we need to understand how changing these voltages are going to affect these currents. And the best way to do that is by drawing a graph of voltage versus current. In this video, we're gonna see how changing this voltage is going to affect this current. So let's do that. This voltage is called the input voltage and this current is called the input current. And the reason for that is whatever voltage or current that you want to amplify will be connected over here, will be seen over here. And so the graph that you draw for this voltage versus this current is called the input characteristics. And before we plot that, we'll just give a name for this. You see, this voltage is the voltage across the base. And so usually we'll call this as the base voltage. But since this voltage is with respect to the ground, all, the, all these voltages are with respect to the ground and the ground is the one that's connected to the emitter, we usually like to call this as the base emitter voltage. So VBE. And similarly, this voltage, which we are not going to be concerned with too much over here, but anyways, this voltage is called we see because it's the voltage of the collector. And again, this is the plus five volt with respect to ground. It's five volts higher than the ground and the ground is the emitter. So we call this as VCE. So our graph, our graph over here, the input characteristics is going to be VBE, that's the input voltage, versus IB, versus IB. And by the way, usually when you plot this graph, we like to keep this output voltage a constant. And the reason for that is this output voltage might affect this input current. We'll see a little bit later how that happens, but we don't want this output voltage to meddle with our experiment. So usually we keep VCE, VCE constant over the entire experiment. All right, so let's quickly go ahead and plot that graph. So we have VBE versus IB. What does that graph look like? Well, notice that this graph is actually the graph of a PN junction under forward bias, right? That's all that graph is going to be. It's a forward bias graph. And we've seen what a forward bias graph looks like, right? When this voltage is very low, let's say about 0.1 volt or 0.2 volt, then there will hardly be any electrons that will be injected over here. And the reason for that is because the depletion region will still be there, and so diffusion will be very low. And so the amount of current that we get over here would be extremely tiny. But as you increase that voltage and eventually you get to 0.7 volt, that's when the depletion region vanishes, and that's when you know a lot of electrons can get injected, and that's when the current will start skyrocketing. And so the graph that we would get over here from the base, for, for the base over here, would be something like this would be something like this. Okay, this is not supposed to be squiggly over here. Let me try one more time that part. All right, much better, <laughs> much better. So this voltage at which this current starts skyrocketing, that's about 0.7 volt. That is about 0.7 volt. And by the way, even though this current is skyrocketing, considerably this current is pretty low compared to say the emitter current or the collector current. This current, by the way, is in microamperes. And the reason for that is because there are very low amount of recombination happening in the base, and so very less number of electrons will be pulled out from over here. But anyways, this is what the graph looks like. Now this is the graph at which VCE value, for the entire experiment, we had kept the VCE value about five volt. Now here's the question, what if we repeat this entire experiment at let's say a much higher voltage of VCE? Let's say at about 10 volts of VCE, what would happen? I want you to just think for a while and see how it would affect this current. Well notice that if you increase this voltage, then the reverse bias increases, and over here the depletion region widens, and as a result the electrons that, that were injected into the base are more likely to get swept across because of the higher Depletion region, because more the depletion region is the one that has the electric field, remember? And as a result, the recombination chances decreases, and so you would expect a slightly smaller base current for the same voltage. So if you were to plot this graph 
for a higher voltage of VCE, you get a pretty identical graph, but the graph changes a little bit. It might look somewhat like this now. Yeah, something like this. Okay, so this would be the graph that we might get about 10 volts when your VCE, this is the value of VCE, okay, 10 volts. And so you can pretty much see that for the same voltages as before, you're getting a little bit less current. So for example, at 0.7 volt, you see you're getting about this much current rather than what you used to get over here. I hope that makes sense. Again, because now the recombination rate has decreased because the depletion width has widened and as a result, more electrons are getting connected. And by the way, these two graphs are highly exaggerated over here. It turns out that in reality, if you do the experiment, the difference will be very minuscule. So we usually like to say that the output voltage, the VC, hardly affects the input current. It does affect ever so slightly. Now the major takeaway that you can get from this input characteristic graph is that if the voltage of the base, the base emitter voltage, if that voltage is somewhere over here, let's say about, I don't know, maybe 0.2 volt or something like that, notice that the input current is pretty much zero. IB is pretty much zero, which means hardly any electrons are getting injected. And as a result, hardly any electrons will get collected, which means IC would also be zero. So if you want your transistor to work as an amplifier, make sure that your base emitter voltage is at least at around 0.7 volt. Because once you hit 0.7 volt, then the current will be considerably high and the amplification will work. So that's one, that's the key takeaway over here. So let me just write that down. If VBE, if VBE is less than 0.7 volt, that's, it's not, it doesn't have to be exact 0.7, 0.6 to 0.7 pretty much, then we could say that the IB would be zero, and that would make IC, IC also zero. So your transistor won't work over here at all which means below 0.7 volt, our transistor is not going to amplify anything. So this is something that engineers have to take care of when they're using their uh, transistors as amplifiers.